Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. My name's Nancy Roswell. I'm President and Vice-Chancellor of the University of Manchester. And the University, like its host city, has a rich heritage and I believe a great future. We are by many measures the largest campus-based university in the United Kingdom, with an annual turnover of about a billion pounds, 10,000 staff and 40,000 students. Of those students, we have more international students than any other European university from 160 countries. We're also proud that we have more students from disadvantaged backgrounds than any other research intensive university. And our graduates are amongst the most highly sought after by employers. The University of Manchester has three core goals. Discovering new things, and if possible, applying those to the benefit of humankind. An outstanding student experience and the production of graduates who will not only be great employees but socially responsible individuals. And thirdly, making a real difference to society. The latter is in part social, our influence on the region, on its economy, but also more globally. And as an example, we independent estimates suggest that we contribute just short of £3 billion in GVA per annum to the local economy. We're a very large university, so we span from uh, materials to music, from physics to philosophy, drama to dentistry, biology to business, and much more. But we have five key areas that we've identified as being truly world-leading. The first may not be a surprise in materials, including the groundbreaking graphene and other 2D materials, but also researching materials in extreme environments, supported by a $100 million grant from BP with centres in corrosion, in composites, in characterisation, and most recently the announcement by the Chancellor of the Exchequer of a £230 million Sir Henry Royce Institute for Advanced Materials to be in Manchester. The second is in cancer, in partnership with many hospital trusts, particularly the Christie, one of only two UK proton beam therapy units. We have a large research institute, Cancer Research UK, named Manchester, along as, with Oxford, as only two super centres for cancer in the UK, and we have a particular focus on early diagnostics, biomarkers, and precision medicine. The third is energy, with the largest concentration of civil nuclear energy researchers in Europe, but also research into other renewables and to energy systems. Industrial biotechnology, we have a large institute that's looking at sustainable ways through biological processes of producing materials, chemicals, medicines, and energy with a recent award of 12 million pounds. And our fifth area, slightly different perhaps, is addressing global inequalities, encompassing our Brooks World Poverty Institute, the Inter International Institute for Development and Poverty Management, the Humanitarian Conflict Response Institute, which trains many of the Red Cross volunteers and all of the staff from the UK that go out to disasters like those uh, in, in West Africa due to Ebola. Obviously, science is a feature here, but we're also very heavily engaged in culture. We've just reopened our spectacular Whitworth Art Gallery with a £15 million refurbishment. We have the Manchester Museum on Oxford Road, the Martin Harris Centre for Music and Drama, the John Rylands Library, and for science, culture, and history, the Jodrell Bank Discovery Centre underneath the Lovell Telescope. We are developing a campus master plan of over £1 billion over the next 10 years, supported in part by a £300 million public bond. Key features of that are redevelopment of our business school with a hotel behind, supported by Bruntwood. The Manchester Engineering Campus Development, which is a £350 million development, and indeed many more investments. For example, the National Graphene Institute will open this month, £60 million building, the next one will the Graphene Engineering Innovation Centre, the GEEK, supported in large part by overseas investment from Abu Dhabi and from the government, and then, of course, the Sir Henry Royce Institute. We also have overseas investment of £200 million for a new student village in Fallowfield. Among some doom and gloom, the great opportunities for Manchester and the university. Some of you will have heard about the Northern Powerhouse, about the devolution of powers and budgets to Manchester, including most recently the health budget. These are fantastic opportunities. We have a government, and indeed an opposition, that recognises the huge value of the north of England and indeed of Manchester. One of those opportunities is Euroscience Open Forum, or ESOF, the largest conference in Europe, which the University and the City of Manchester will jointly host in July 2016. We aim to attract over 4,500 visitors, including 500 from the media. We'll have from cutting-edge science and Nobel laureates to the earliest research careers. 
We'll have interactions with business and we'll have science in the city with events across Manchester, across the region and across the UK. And finally, this means that Manchester is European City of Science from now up until ESOF. There'll be a whole range of events. The first one can I urge you to watch next week on the BBC, Stargazing Live, broadcast live from Jodrell Bank by our own Brian Cox, which will include, of course, live footage and links to the total eclipse that will be seen from the Faroe Islands. So I'm now going to show a short film, but if you want to hear more about ESOF, about Manchester, about the university, about European City of Science, I'll be in conversation with Sir Howard Bernstein in the Manchester Villa at 4.15. Thank you. This is Manchester, European City of Science, where scientific innovation is in our DNA. Indeed, Manchester is the city where Rawls met Royce, where Ernest Rutherford first split the atom, and where Alan Turing pioneered the concept of artificial intelligence. If these are just some of the highlights from the last century, what should we expect from this one? We've already had graphene. The world's thinnest, strongest, most conducted material was isolated here for the first time in 2004. Its discovery won its founders the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2010 which has resulted in the latest development in graphene, the University of Manchester's National Graphene Institute, a £61 million hub for research and the commercial development of this remarkable material. From here and across the city region, Manchester's knowledge infrastructure is growing like never before. At the heart of it all sits the corridor, connecting a workforce of 60,000 people across Manchester's knowledge quarter. The corridor is home to the largest campus university the University of Manchester on its site, as well as the UK's most applied to university, MMU. Along with the Central Manchester University Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust, these institutions together form the largest clinical academic campus in Europe. Corridor is also home to Manchester Science Partnerships, a world-class science and technology community which extends from its central base in the city to Alderley Park a flagship bioscience R&D site located just 30 minutes' drive from central Manchester. Organisations like Manchester Science Partnerships are an integral part of the UK's innovation infrastructure, supporting the commercialisation of research and technologies originating from our university and clinical institutions. Manchester is an important hub for the global life sciences sector, Today, it's home to more than 250 life science companies, such as Kyogen, Waters, Elucigene, and Epistem. This cluster is supported by a number of partnerships, including Manchester Academic Health Science Centre, Trustech, Northwest eHealth, and Manchester Integrating Medicine and Innovative Technology. Organisations like BioNow are contributing towards Manchester's position as a member of the European Super League of Life Science Clusters ensuring the city continues to be the number one UK location for biomedical foreign direct investment. And with the Manchester Institute of Biotechnology, the University of Manchester has one of Europe's leading industry interface to biotechnology research institutes, with world leading capabilities in chemical synthesis and manufacture. But it's not just life sciences where Manchester is making waves. Strong partnerships are forming to pioneer new projects. In healthcare science and engineering, MMU is leading the way with specialisms in ageing prevention, biomechanical and sensory control, disease diagnosis and revolutionary heart bypass arteries. More than 5,000 students and staff are part of MMU's world-class science offer that covers climate change, digital innovations, atmospheric science, biofuels, microbiology, CGI and much more. Materials research has become a major focal point setting the scene for some of Manchester's most exciting developments over the next few years. Complementing the research at the National Graphene Institute, the University of Manchester's £60 million Graphene Engineering Innovation Centre will be critical in the development of commercial applications for the wonder material. As well as graphene, there is a commitment in Manchester to discover more about the properties of advanced materials across the board, from smart materials to quantum dots, the city's world-leading position in this field is set to be bolstered by the £235 million Sir Henry Royce Institute for Advanced Materials Research and Innovation. Even if we consider the 19th century when Dalton devised his atomic theory in Manchester, 
or the 20th century, when the world's first stored program computer was developed at the university, 